Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Tyler here, and today we're going to continue where we left off with our Electron Development Tutorial Series. So, let's get started. Today's episode is going to actually be just mainly making this app look a lot nicer. And if you can tell, right now it's just a white background and three headers. What I want to do is update the CPU stats like we have been doing, but also make it more visually appealing. Um, and so we'll just do a quick quick couple uh, CSS changes and we'll also change the file structure of this project to make it a little easier to work with down the line. So uh, let's get started with that. First thing I want to do before we do anything uh, with the actual styling is I want to change the file structure of the application so that way we kind of separate our renderer process and our main process more. So to do that I'm just going to create a folder inside our apps directory and I'm going to call that renderer and simply I'm just going to put the index.html file into this renderer folder. Now what that means is that if we were to restart up the application right now it wouldn't work because when we actually load the application into the window we are expecting it to be in the same current directory. So to fix that we're just going to type in ren renderer slash index.html and that means when we start this up which I will do right now. I did not mean to open that. When we start this up, we should now see. Close this. There we go. npm start. We should still render.js. Oh, in the render.js. My bad. There we go. Now, when we start this up, we should see everything is working just as it was before. So let's continue. Next, what I want to do is actually have it update the CPU name because we never actually got around to doing that. We just have the core count and the CPU usage, which we want to make sure that this is finally styled. So let's go in here. Conveniently, I already ID'd it and it has the ID of CPU dash name. And inside the render file, let's say over here, um, update CPU name, put a little comment, and I already have it grabbed so CPU model underscore name Dom is what I called the the document uh, object so CPU model name Dom dot enter text is equal to uh, CPU name now I haven't actually set the CPU name as you can see if we do this we should probably get an error yeah CPU name is not defined and that is because we haven't actually set that so I'm gonna say let's CPU name equal to this just for now and let's actually create that functionality so we're going to use our API which we worked on last episode to securely load in data and we're going to use our API and get access to the actual CPU name which conveniently um, if you actually console.log these os.cpus it's an array containing information about every single core and on every single core is the name of the actual CPU so we're just going to do that CPU or model we'll call it and we will do os.cpus and we'll just grab the first index because that should never change between these indexes and then do dot model and that is what it'll be so to actually get the CPU model now we can come in here and do this um, it should be API dot CPU I think I copied it yeah did. Perfect. And when we refresh, we'll see uh, my actual system's processor name. Perfect. So now that we have that all set up, what I want to do is actually start styling this application and all around just making it look a lot nicer. So let's get started with that. First thing I'm going to do is inside the renderer folder, I'm going to create a folder called CSS and I'm going to create a file called style.css inside here I'm also going to link that file and we're going to type in link there we go we're going to make sure it's a style sheet href of dot slash css style dot css and now that these are all linked nothing should have changed but let's just check perfect so I already copied um, a root like kind of style sheet I want to use some color codes I'll leave these in the description if you guys want but it's basically just four colors, uh, a very dark gray kind of color, a lighter kind of gray. Um, and I'll actually show this here. 
these are the colors and I will leave its palette number 2763 on colorhunt.co slash palette. And I'll leave this color palette in the description if you want to follow along, though I encourage you to find your own palette. So we have this and I'm also just going to select all the elements, remove the margin, remove the padding, and set a font, uh, let's see, font dash family, and we'll say the Apple system font by default um, with these backup fonts. Perfect. So when we refresh, it should look a little different, but very few stuff has changed but the font and the removing of margin and padding. So next what I want to do is I actually want to get, um, the way I want this laid out is I want this to be in the center of the screen and I want these to be kind of underneath it. So for example, I want them to be here and then I want there to be a progress bar, kind of but I want it to show the percentage of the CPU that's used in like a very visual format. So let's do that. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna style the background to the body. I'm gonna say the background color will set to, I think I called it dark gray, yeah, dark gray. And we'll set the color as well to silver because we want the text to be that silver. Oh, what am I doing? Bar, there we go. There we go. Okay, so this is what we have here. The background is like a very darkish green kind of blue gray. So let's continue. Next, what we have is I want to actually um, get these secondary stats. So these are like the secondary stats and I want to actually get those all styled up. So I'm going to select that and I will come up in here. I'm going to close these files real quick. There we go. So dot secondary stats to select the class. And what I want to do is set kind of like a predefined width. This isn't the most responsive, but I'm going to limit later on limit the actual size of the application so it's very small anyway. So this should be fun. 250 pixels. Uh, we're going to say margin of auto. And we're going to say display of flex. And then what we want to do is we want to say justify content. And I kind of want there to be space between which would look something like this. There's very little space between, maybe like 270. Perfect, looks a lot nice. Okay, so next let's actually get this H1 and get this in the center conveniently. CPU-name is a very um, easy thing to style. We're just gonna say text, align center, margin. We will set, um, let's say 60, uh, let's do like 80, 80 pixels, zero pixels on the right, and we'll do 10 bottom, yeah, 10 bottom, to zero left. And if we look now, we see our CPU model name is styled in the center. We're just going to say font dash size, and we'll do it to 0.9 EM. I did not want to do that. I want to do RAM, I think. Oh, what am I doing? It's gonna, sorry, do two pixels. I think is about a good size. Yeah, uh, maybe a little smaller. Well, it looks pretty good. So we have that, and now what I wanna do is actually style up these font sizes. So we'll do font size 0.9 EM. Nice, let's increase that 0.2, and font weight, we'll just set it to very, very, very light. So. If we look here, oh, that's why that didn't work. I'm sorry about that, guys. Uh, H3s. There we go. Okay. So in here we have our font weight and our font size. Let's set that back to 250, and they should look pretty good now. Perfect. That looks really good. So what I want to do now is I want to create this kind of like like a progress bar, but it'll update in real time. So we'll have 8% of it filled if the CPU percentage is 8, 11% if it's 11. So let's actually show how we would go about doing that. So it's just like creating a progress bar, but in this case, I'm gonna kind of create um, two divs that are gonna be completely empty. So one is going to be, let's say, overall used container. So that'll be for the overall CPU usage because in the next episode, spoiler alert, we're actually going to probably create another two bars, one for the user's amount of usage and one for the actual system usage um, that'll be independent of each other. So overall 
used container and over here we'll have overall uh, we'll call CPU used so basically the way I'm thinking is I want to have this be an external container like a big background of like white or something and in here I want this to fill up as the percentage that it needs to so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually style these inside of CSS now just to see how it would look so we're gonna do overall overall use container I think I called it and we're gonna say margin of auto we're also gonna give it a predefined width of let's say 65 viewports okay and then we're gonna say a height of 24 pixels and margin um, mar margin oh what am I doing I mean border <laughs> border radius let's say of like five pixels that might be a little much but we'll see and then we'll do margin uh, auto but we'll also set a padding on top with like 60 pixels so that should look pretty good and if we actually look you won't see anything because there's no background color so let's say that let's say a border of var and let's do that silver color and let's see how it looks um, uh, one pixel solid <laughs> There we go. So we basically want this. Let's do this a little smaller, maybe. 60, maybe like 50. That might be a good size. Eh, 60 is pretty good. Okay. So basically, what I want to do is have that inner container now filled up, say for 10%, it'll be 10% of the width. So let's just style the inner container right now. And we'll say, I think it was called overall CPU dash used. So overall. background color we'll set that silver and we'll set the height by default will be 24 pixels we will also give it the same border radius so it looks nice and pretty and we will give it um, uh, a default width of one ten percent so by default, this will be 10% wide. So that looks pretty good. Now what I want to do is actually have this dynamically update inside of our JavaScript. So to do that, I'm going to go into the render file, and I'm just going to create a new function down here called, uh, let's call it update. I'm going to call it update progress bar, because this could be used for progress bars, anything that needs a percentage uh, filled. So and later on, we'll probably make a progress bar. I think this could be a good thing to have. So it'll take a parents parent container. Let's we'll call it parents. We'll call this the inner and the percent. By default, will be uh, one. We'll say the percentage is one if nothing's been put in here. So what we basically want to do with this is we want to say the inner is going to be equal to the parents underscore and we basically want to get the clients uh, the actual width of the element so I think that should work if we have this and then we're just going to times it by the percentage divided by a hundred so because currently the percentage comes back in a format where it is say eight percent out of a hundred whatever we want to divide that by 100 and then times that by the client width and that should give us the actual pixel values that we the actual pixel width for the inner one that we need and then conveniently we can just say inner uh, inner underscore dot style dot width is equal to inner width um, and I'll just I'll wrap it in a little string so we could type px so if we do this this should now work and conveniently what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this function whenever we get our data back from our main process so uh, up top I'll go ahead and create two new constants constant for each um, actual divider and to do that we'll have constants 
we'll call this overall container document get elements by ID paste that in there const overall inner is equal to document get element by ID and I think this is percentage overall used percentage I think no it doesn't sound right overall CPU used that's about right Okay, so we have these, and we have overall container and overall inner, which means we can actually call this update progress now. Update progress bar, overall container, overall inner, and we'll pass in the percentage that we get back, which is this right here. So the current load is the overall load. Later on, when we actually want to get the CPU that's used by just the system, like the operating system, or just that, we'll actually be able to have a progress bar for each of those because we get three specific values back um, about the current load. So if we actually look here, hopefully it's updating. It is. Okay, so right now it is updating. When it's 12% used, it will look like that. And just, I'm gonna kind of fake it and just show what it'll look like if it's 99.9% .9 used. Yep, it is just the tiniest sliver left. And what about, um, let's try 0.2% used. So if there's basically no, yeah, perfect. So this seems to work pretty well. And now what I wanna do is actually remove these uh, this title. So see these elements right here that allow you to like, for example, open the developer tools or something like that. I, I basically just wanna get rid of that and maybe decrease the height of this window just a little bit. So to do that, we're gonna actually close this. Um, oh, and last thing, I also want to show, instead of saying my app in the title, I wanna show the actual um, CPU name, for example. Let's just, let's just go with that. Or, no, we'll just show uh, our, we'll just call it, we'll just say system, system usage app and in here it should now say system dash system usage app perfect so now that we have that all set up i do want to change in the index i want to basically get rid of that auto hide menu bar and again to simply do that we're just going to set that to true now one thing you'll notice is if we actually start this up, if you can look very closely, you can see how the CPU count and this kind of come into existence um, anytime we refresh anything. So it's kind of a pain if you're, yeah, so see how it kind of flashes in. We don't want the user to see that. So one thing we'll do is in the index file, we'll actually do window dot um, on ready to show and we'll set this to just window dot show so what will happen here is whenever we're finally ready to actually show the application we will show it so now if we restart it'll look a lot more smooth though we can also get rid of that but you can kind of see this is what our application looks like and I said I would decrease the height a little bit so I'll do that and there we go which means if we get rid of those developer tools, this would actually look pretty nice right now. Um, and in the next episode, I will try to elaborate on this application further. I encourage you to try to build out those features yourself. And one good practice problem, if you want to continue working on JavaScript skills or your Electron skills, is to do the same thing for memory. For example, show the system memory that's used and as well as this. But no, in the future episode, I'm going to um, work on a light mode and dark mode and how you can kind of share user settings, for example, using local storage, pros and cons of that, as well as I'll show you a different framework used for actually um, showing and holding onto user information, not inside the actual Electron app. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.